I know that there's a million videos out there on photo and video workflow and naming conventions and cataloging and, and there are some good ones, but a majority of them that I see only go 80% of the way and then they stop. So I'm gonna show you the, I'm gonna show you how to get to 100. Let's intro and go. Welcome back, it's good to see you. Real quick before we get into workflow and naming and all that stuff, it was a big week for me. I sold my camera and lenses and went with an entirely different system. And I went and bought myself a phase one, the, the new trichromatic system, which I've played with quite a bit and really fell in love with and thought, that's for me. So that was exciting. A couple people asked me, would I do an unboxing video? What a great idea for a video. So the, the package came on, on Monday and I set the entire studio and and I started to cut and open, and as I started to open, I realized that they didn't send me the, like the box that the camera comes in, and the box that the, somebody had already unboxed it in, in New York, and had assembled a beautiful Pelican case with all of these components in it. I did it anyway, and, and then I got through the edit, and I thought, this is the most boring video I've ever seen. I will share it with you. I've condensed it down to 15 seconds, which I think is just enough time. You'll, you'll get the gist, check it out. Right, so that was it. I, I opened a Pelican case and inside the Pelican case was the system and some batteries and a charger and a warranty card. And then there was another box with the lens that I bought and it's wonderful and I shot with it and I cannot believe that I have one and that it looks as good as it does. So real quick, just wanted to say a uh, very big thank you to um, Francis Westfield at Phase One for holding my hand for the last couple months and letting me know that this was possible and it was all gonna be okay. And also to PhotoCare in Manhattan, Anthony Festa and John Schlesinger for making it all come together and making sure that I got the boxes on Monday. So um, thank you to everybody. It was really cool and I'm very happy with everything. So moving on. When it comes to like file naming and storing stuff and hard drives and backups, like I said, there's a ton of videos out there. A lot of them are really good. And I'm going to share with you how I do it and then, you know, take a bit or a piece and hopefully it helps you out. About hard drives, everybody in the world talks about RAID arrays and how important it is to have a RAID array in your workflow. And I agree with them. I do not have one. Just not something I want to spend money on yet. So I am using singular hard drives. I basically store everything by year. Somewhere in the six to 10 terabyte neighborhood is, is a year for me. A Sharpie, the date starts in you know, July of 2017 and went till June of 2018. And I take that drive and that sits on a shelf. What I do have is I have an identical backup of every single one of those, which lives off site, which is the most important thing. A RAID array is great. If a drive fails, it's going to pick right back up and, and everything will be safe and you'll be able to pull the drive, pop in a new one, it'll rewrite all the data and, and away you go. The problem lies with when you're out on a job and your house explodes and now your wonderful RAID array uh, all the drives in that array, as many as you have, um, are all exploded and all the data is gone. So you got to have offsite backup. To me, the most important thing. And yes, someday soon I will purchase a very large RAID array and I will then do a video on that maybe. I have a series of working drives that I use. I have a main drive and a backup drive. They are one terabyte SSDs. And so anything that I'm currently working on is on those drives. And no, they don't stay in the same place. Once I'm done with a job, it goes onto the yearly drive and it remains there and the backup off-site which happens usually every couple of days so at, at most I'm only ever losing a tiny bit but let's dive in here this is my current working drive things in green are things that are actively being worked on things in red are things that have just finished and need to be transferred over so I'll take you in real quick I'm just gonna show you this is how I set up my naming conventions like I said I store everything by year this happened to be a video job that happened on August 6th for a series called audio pilot live and it was a guy named Jordan and so the file naming is 2018-0806 APL, and then the artist was Jordan. Once we get in, we have a series of folders in there. We've got three cameras. This was a video job. Camera A, camera B, camera C. We then had a musical backing track, so there's that. And then my Premiere folder, which is where all of my Premiere stuff is. And then my Exports folder, which is where all of the finished edits export to. And they all share the same file naming convention as their parent folder. So as we keep going through folders, 
we just keep adding on to the end of it. First folder was 2018-08-06 APL Jordan. We go inside, now it's 2018-08-06 APL Jordan ACAM. I've seen a lot of people that, that do this naming convention up top here, and then when, they, when you dive into the folder, it's ACAM, BCAM, uh, audio, you know, or they, or they label it by camera. Here's my 5D4, here's my 1DX. The problem is now you have thousands of folders called 1DX. You have thousands of folders called 5D4 and you're, you're not really doing your best to protect it. So now they plug in their SD card and they download all of the files off their camera. And what happens is you download whatever the camera has named it and away you go. The problem is that file names in cameras repeat. Um, it might take a while, but they do repeat, which means that eventually, after you shoot enough, you'll have multiple file names that are the same. The last thing you ever want to have is a duplicate file name. You'll be able to decipher the difference, but software won't. So for instance, Sony users, A7R2, I had uh, a bunch of them that I loved very much. Every time you formatted the card, it would start back at C0001. So if I'm running three cameras, I now have three files that are all named the exact same thing. That's the worst place to be. Now again, I can tell the difference in the angles. What happens is when you load them into Premiere, let's say, and then you send that project to somebody else and they go to open it, and Premiere might do that thing where it says like, hey, can you, can you help me find the files? And you say, sure. And it says, let's start with C0001. Where, where is that? And I tell it it's here. It now thinks that C0001 is all three of those C0001s. If I were to open this folder in five years and go, oh my God, ACAM is gone. What would I search for? I don't know what the file names were. I have no idea. Do you think I'm gonna remember it was MVI0089? Hell no, hell no. It's really just a neat and tidy way to keep things. Now, same thing with photos. Here we are now, I, I use Capture One and I would say 95% of the time I am tethered into Capture One. If I do happen to be shooting onto a card, the second I get back here and download, those all get renamed to follow that naming convention there. This is a job we shot last week into Capture One. So Capture One creates all these folders. I, of course, give them my naming convention. For this job, there were 23 or so people that we photographed that day. They need to know at a glance whose picture this is. What I've also done is I've added in last name and first name. This way when the client calls the agency and says, hey, can you send us Kristen's image? They can just go right in and search for Kristen and her last name and there's all of her images or there's her final image. I like this structure. I would love to hear somebody else who has a better way of doing it because I'm always constantly searching for a better way and a more efficient way to do things. So please let me know, leave a comment, give me a call, send me an email. Protect your data, you know? At any rate, thanks for watching. If you walked away with a tidbit of info that was helpful to you, great. Maybe you'll hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And I'll see you next week.